Long Legs has been in the theaters for a few days now, and everyone that wanted to see it or know that it exists has gone out and watched it. So now I thought I would do a spoiler-filled commentary on my thoughts watching this movie and how much I wanted to leave during it. Let's begin. Before I jump into it, I would love if you did me a favor, like the video and subscribe if you appreciate honest commentary. I try to keep it light, I try to keep it fun and fancy free, I don't know why I said that, and I hope you join me along for the ride. Even if you don't agree with me, that, that's the fun part about this. A lot of people love Long Legs. There are certain movies that come out every year where I just do not gel with early critics or even the mass in general. And that's okay. I know you have movies like that as well, where you watch them, you scratch your head, and you think, what the fuck are people talking about? This movie's miserable. It was a chore to sit through. And that's where I land on Long Legs. A movie that, production-wise, is fantastic. It's a little darker probably than it needs to be at times. It's hard to see some stuff. But for the most part, lighting is brilliant. The music, very Shining-esque. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure it just straight up kind of rips off The Shining at points. It, it's serviceable. And it's doing some playful things with aspect ratios and whatnot. Does it come off a bit pretentious at times? Does it come off as pretty artsy? Yeah, it does. Whenever we get the artsier type of film style, I always ask myself, is this in service of the story? Is this eliciting emotion that normally wouldn't have been there because of how it's presenting itself? And then from there, I make a judgment call. In the instance of Long Legs, I'd say yes and no. I think at times the kind of Polaroid ghost story aspect ratio they're doing does have some purpose behind it. It gives an unsettling feeling. But then at other times, these long take camera shots and the slow conversations aren't really building tension, they're just frustrating the piss out of me. In my review, I brought up several movies by David Fincher that are crime thrillers that obviously they don't have the horror element per se, such as Seven, Zodiac, The Game, where I thought those movies were done much better. This feels like a combination of those films along with obviously Silence of the Lambs and a few other movies in the genre. There's been a buzz term circulating for quite a while now known as elevated horror. This movie would fall under it. It follows. Hereditary. Midsommar. Movies that kind of flip the genre on its head. Do something unique or different. Oh, we're going to make this movie take place in the daytime. Going against the grain and we're still going to give you creepy, unsettling vibes. Or we're going to shoot this movie entirely in black and white with only a trace amount of color at appropriate times. Or we're going to make the lead protagonist something that you're not expecting. Like, just things that take you out of your comfort zone and really pull you in a different direction. Those can be very fun. They can be absolutely effective. I mentioned It Follows. That movie features Micah Monroe as the lead. She's the lead here in Long Legs. I freaking love It Follows. I dug the aesthetic of that movie. I love the music, that synth wave. It had a great concept behind it. A simple premise executed flawlessly in my mind. I know people that hate it. And believe it or not, that's okay. I don't, I don't need to like throw a fit about it. <laughs> we just have a conversation and move on. And the thing that pisses me off the most about movies like this and Barbarian and others in this genre are that they get such praise out of the gate, such false praise, it seems like. Scariest movie ever made. You will get sick to your stomach. That's just, that's what they do. That's what they do every time. And so there's a sense of fakeness, a phoniness around the movie before it even launches that already irks me. Doesn't mean it won't be great all the same, but I just hate that messaging going in. Like, what are the odds it's gonna be the scariest fucking movie of all time? Pretty slim, Shady. But I'm gonna find out. And no, Long Legs isn't scary at all. And people kept talking about this amazing atmosphere I guess kind of, but I never felt there was a threat. So yes, atmospheric, I suppose, but it was this very sleepy, dreary, puts me to sleep atmosphere, not, oh my God, someone's watching her, someone's gonna jump out, what's happening? Early on, I'd say the first half hour, I kinda had that. There's a scene where she's on the phone talking to her mom and they have this doorway behind her and I was thinking, oh man, they're really, they're really playing up this shot. Someone's going to jump out or they're going to just slowly walk by or something's going to happen. Nothing ever happens. And that goes for the rest of the movie. 
nothing happens in these shots. And so after a while, I'm just kind of desensitized by it and I'm no longer really interested in what this film is doing because I know it's all just hoodwinks. I know they're all misdirections. The other thing that bothers the fuck out of me about these movies is there's so much promise here because of the competency in direction, because of the visual splendor, because of the good sound design and typically some good performances, it's got everything it needs. Like the director is clearly competent, but for some reason it's just not sticking at all for me. And Barbarian had me for 20 or so minutes. I was intrigued, I was pulled in, until this movie completely turns the corner into Looney Tunes world, and it felt unexpected and unwelcome. Longlegs had a fine opener where we see weirdo Nicolas Cage's character, Longlegs, creeping up to a girl who's looking at a mysterious car off in the distance at her farmhouse. He drops down and smiles, and it goes to the title screen, and then we get some of that A24 stank thrown in, and this is where I feel like it's not servicing the story or the vibe of the movie. It's just being artsy for the sake of being artsy. We have the Polaroid shot with some orange screens and title cards coming up. And is it a nitpicky thing? Yes. That's this whole movie to me is nitpicks. And when the nitpicks get large, it becomes a dick pic. After that hook of an intro that definitely got me intrigued in things, we jump forward in time where we see this young girl growing up. She's now working for the FBI. So I'm already a little confused and annoyed because we saw this girl with long legs. We now see her as an adult. You don't know necessarily if this is the same person that grew up, but my assumption was it is. And she's put on the case to figure out this mysterious thing going on with people dying and who Long Legs is. And I already know in the back of my mind, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure she met this guy long ago. D did she forget? Is she not saying anything? Does she not know the connection? What's going on and why is there so much convenience here? But before we do that, she's with her agent and they go to a house in the suburbs. She has this sixth sense that there's something going on in a house across the street. Her partner questions it, but he rings the doorbell and his head's blown off. And the, the killer surrenders. What was the point of that scene? I'm not sure there's a connection to anything else outside of they wanted to showcase that Agent Lee Harker has a bit of a special ability where she knows where danger is lurking around the corners. Okay, is that gonna play into a bigger narrative down the road? Not, not really. She's gonna be working under the tutelage of Agent Carter. He pulls her in and they're going to try to investigate what's going on with a series of murders, a string of murders that's been taking place over years. Under the tutelage of Agent Carter, she's gonna be working closely with him to figure out what is going on with all these mysterious murders that have been happening over the years. Where someone in the household loses their mind and kills the other members in a very violent, grotesque way. I love a good thriller and I like the premise of this movie. What I don't like is it felt like a cop-out at the end. It's building up kind of this realistic play out where, okay, she's gonna figure it out, she's smart, she's got these weird quirks, has Asperger's or some shit, she doesn't know how to talk to people. She's awkwardly chatting with the agent's daughter at his house at one point. And then it gets really kind of convoluted and up its own ass in the story department when it's unveiled that her mom has actually been working with long legs and the real big bad of this film, Satan. It was the devil all along, who knew? I can tell you what I knew. One, I knew that she was the little girl who saw long legs when she was a kid. Two, I knew her mom had something to do with it since she sounded sketchy as shit on the phone. But what I wasn't expecting was for such incompetence and frustrating to watch actions take place. Agent Lee Harker can't complete a sentence in under three minutes. The scene where she talks to her mom on the phone, well, there's a couple of them, they go on for an eternity. The atmosphere, again, is not tense for me. It's not scary. I want the thing to move along because there's no threat. Oh, she sees someone out in the woods when she fucking leaves her house unattended and just wanders into the woods. Why would she do that? Why wouldn't she lock the doors and call backup? And then she sees the figure in the house and then just chill the rest of the night. Oh, there's mysterious notes left for her with puzzle pieces on that are from long legs. I'm not gonna call back up. I'm just gonna be chill and stay here for the night. This was so stupid. What the movie has explained to us through painful retelling is that at one point in time, Longlegs was gonna kill Agent Lee Harker, but 
her mother made a deal with the devil to spare their lives and instead she would bring more souls to the demon king. How did she do this? Well, with dolls, of course. Everybody knows you use dolls. So Longlegs has been tinkering in his workshop, making dolls, putting a magical silver ball in the brain, and then the mother would go to the houses under the guise of being a Jehovah's Witness or some shit. She gets in, she sets the doll down, and she witnesses. She has to be there for this action. She witnesses as the doll somehow interrupts the brain waves or is able to convince the head of the household to go crazy and murder everyone and also lull the other people in the home into a false sense of security. All right. I think my two favorite scenes in this film where I wanted to be like long legs and smash my face into the seat in front of me until I had nothing left is when Lee goes over to her supervisor Carter's house for his daughter's birthday and she knows they're fucked. Her mom is there with the doll. She has chosen Carter's daughter because <laughs> there's this whole, <laughs> there's this whole thing where the birthdays have to be six days apart from I don't, I, I don't remember. I'm sorry. I don't remember. It's really convoluted, but it has something to do with where, where the dates fall and birthdays and ages and, and some dumb crap that doesn't make any sense for some reason. And so when it's six days before or after a specific birth date, the doll gets dropped off and the murder takes place. Lee figured this out. It's pretty much the only thing she figured out. So she goes to the house and she forgot, I guess, how to use a gun or how to restrain someone because she allows Agent Carter to escort his wife into the other room and kill her. She knows this is gonna happen. Now, part of me thought, okay, this might be kind of interesting. She's at odds with herself. She has been told by her mom that if they don't allow this to play out fully, that she's going to be spending eternity twisting in agony as she's killed and tortured over and over again forever. But that's not what happens here. She just is straight up stupid and allows it to happen and then intervenes, blowing the head off the doll and killing her mother. And then this black mist comes out of the ball and it's probably not over. Of course it's not over. There'll be a sequel to Long Legs. By the way, there's no fucking Long Legs in this movie. Kind of like Barbarian, there's no Barbarian. It's all interpretive. Oh, the Barbarian were the friends we made along the way. The Barbarian was the, the guy that built the underground tunnels. The Barbarian was really Justin Long. Fuck you. What are you doing, Daddy Long Legs? There's no spider. Is it a, is it a metaphor? Is it a, is it the branching paths of the legs going in different direct? No, no, it's, it's just a stupid nonsense name. Let's talk about Nicolas Cage for a second as Long Legs, AKA Buffalo Bill. Doing a poor rendition of the Silence of the Lambs killer, we have Cage here out caging himself, going full blown wicker man at times. I truly don't know how anyone thought this was a good, scary performance. Unhinged? Sure. But I, we all know Nicolas Cage. And so we've seen him do these types of performances. It comes off as comical. He's singing happy birthday for, what did they say, 19 minutes or something on camera. Obviously, they don't show all of that. But he sounded like Marilyn Monroe. Happy birthday, Mr. President. He's screaming in his car. Woo! I know I'm all over this place, but the movie's all over the place. It's so many different things jammed together instead of being a story you can actually kind of follow. That's why It Follows was so solid. It had a basic premise and it ran with it. That's why Seven is such a great thriller. Oh, there's a murderer redoing the Seven Deadly Sins and he's acting them out because he's psychotic. That's easy to follow and it makes that tension feel real. But when you have a movie like this where you're not sure what's actually happening at any given time, I don't understand why I'm even following Long Legs around at all the few times that we did. That didn't really seem to add anything to the character or the plot. What the hell's the point? Oh, I almost forgot the other part I absolutely hated, and that was when Lee was at her mom's place. She was escorted there by a fellow FBI agent, and this woman goes, I'll stay in the car. Why? Oh, I know, so you can die. It, it was so clear. She, as soon as she said, 
I'll stay in the car that basically said I'm going to die in about two minutes and she did the mom comes out blows her away with the shotgun Lee witnesses out the window upstairs Lee also with a gun could either knock out the window and shoot the woman or she could quickly run down the stairs and shoot from a distance but instead of trying to sneak up and get the jump on this woman or whatever she opts to I guess have a cup of coffee let the mom get away? She waits an eternity to go after her and meet up with her down the road. It was so silly. But again, that's the whole movie. It's in slow motion. And that paired with the fact that everything is so emotionless throughout. Longlegs is the only character that has any sort of personality. The main characters are just there. They're like NPCs moving through the scenes. And last thing I'm gonna say about this film is Lee really needs to work on her stamina. Anytime she's doing anything, it's... <laughs> I know, she was scared. It wasn't because she was out of shape. She was just in an intense moment. It's okay, I'm just, I'm just joking. I found it a little annoying was all. It was a little too heavy on the breathing. Well, there you have it. My more concrete thoughts on long legs and why it just did not work for me. I was frustrated. I was sitting there just waiting for things to move a bit quicker. And if it was going to be slowly paced, as it clearly was, I have to have some sense of direction for this movie. I need things to kind of come together. But they really don't. And I think the writer really realized that late in the game when he decided, oh shit, I better have like a whole montage to explain this film. Listen, I know a bunch of people like it, a bunch of people hate it. It's a very divisive film. At the end of the day, like what you like, hate what you hate, and that's fine. Let others express their opinions without having to be a complete asshole about it. If you like what I'm doing here, please like the video, subscribe, and that way you won't miss a single movie review, spoiler conversation, a rant, a roast, a live stream. I do tons of movie stuff every week. Would love to have you stick around. And I have a second channel. It's newer, Adam Does Rants, where I'm talking about a bunch of first world problems in a comedic way to hopefully put a smile on your face. If you want to make me smile, please become a member on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I have weekly vlogs over there, depending on what tier level you're at. There are 300 plus exclusive videos there now that you can unlock by just becoming a single dollar member. But I would love if you checked me out over there and hopefully I'll catch you next time. Take care.